Hey you all, my name is Katherine. I'm an AmeriCorps member serving with the Environmental Education Leadership Corps at Legacy Brook Park. Today, we are going to be talking about skulls. Um, we're going to be talking about different animal skulls and how they look different and different adaptations, different parts of them. Um, so I do hope that you join us today for this program. All right, so first we are going to be talking about the different parts of the cranium or skull that we're going to be looking at today. So first off, we have our cranium. Um, that is the top half that does not include the lower jawbone. We have our orbitals, which is where our eyes go um, when we see. We have a nasal cavity that's where we smell things. We also have our dental structure right here. Um, and that's going to consist of different teeth. So we have incisors at the front, canine teeth, we have premolars and molars. Teeth structure is going to look a little bit different on some of these different animals. Um, there is a sagittal crest at the top of a skull. And lastly, we also have the foramen magnum, which is a hole that we're going to see in these where the spine connects to the cranium. Alright, so now that we've talked about different parts of the cranium that we're going to be looking at today, we are going to start looking at how those different parts of the skull and cranium look different on different animals. Um, so we can start with the goat skull. Um, we can see that the orbitals are a pretty decent size on this skull. Um, the position of them is a little bit different than some of these other animals. One thing that's really unique about goats that you aren't going to necessarily be able to tell based off of their bone structure, but it's really interesting and unique, is they actually have square pupils. Um, those allow them to have more peripheral vision so they can um, see predators while they are grazing. And speaking of grazing, one thing that I wanted to talk about with the goat skull is the shape and size of their teeth. So as we think about the shape of teeth, um, we can think about what diet does an animal have? What is this going to tell us about the food that they eat? And so um, goats have a little bit more broader teeth than other animals. Um, this is going to allow them to grind up plant material. Um, they really only eat plants, uh, plants and minerals. So um, that's going to allow them to chew up their food that they eat. One other thing that's really unique about goats that you don't see on a ton of other animals is a dental pad at the top instead of incisors. So a lot of other mammals have incisors right there. They have a dental pad that allows them to gather large amounts of um, plant material at a time to eat. So that's something that's really unique about the goat. Um, we can move on to talk about the, our raccoon skull here. One thing that's a little bit different about the raccoon versus the goat is its teeth. It has those top incisors right there. It also has a canine tooth, right? These large teeth that really allow for shredding up more meat material. So raccoons are omnivores, so they eat both plant material and fruits, but they can also eat small animals like frogs or birds or small rodents. So um, their teeth are going to look a little bit different because they have that different diet and this allows them to eat um, a larger variety of food. They're really, they have a really adaptive diet um, that allows them to really survive off of a lot of different types of food. Um, it has that foramen magnum in the back. It's a four-legged creature, so that spine is going to go that way, so the legs can you know, be on the ground like that. Next, we can talk about our dog skull. One thing that is a little bit different about this skull than the goat and the raccoon that we've talked about so far is it has a higher sagittal crest, right? It's part of that cranium that's in the kind of back top of the skull. And this is where your jaw muscle is going to attach. So if that's higher, it's going to have a larger jaw muscle. So what can this tell us? If an animal needs a larger jaw muscle, maybe it needs more power to chew up its food. Dogs can eat um, meat as well, so it might need a stronger jaw to chew that kind of food up. Another possible adaptation for a larger jaw muscle could be defense. 
you know, having a strong jaw can be really useful when you're in a fight. So those are a couple of the things that we see with the sagittal crest with this dog. Again, that foramen magnum towards the back four-legged creature. Next, we're going to talk about our opossum. We see a lot of similarities between the possum and the raccoon. Pretty similar shape and size, a little bit differences, a little a couple of differences. Um, the possum has a more flat um, skull. It also has a larger sagittal crest than the raccoon, which is interesting because they have similar diets, you know. The possum also is an omnivore, can eat both plant and animal matter. Um, but one of the reasons we see that higher sagittal crest is actually because um, for the size of its jaw, it has some of the uh, largest amount of teeth for that size, right, of most mammals. So because it needs to account for more teeth in that size of a jaw, um, it needs a stronger jaw muscle to help assist with that. Again, we see those canine teeth. That's going to help shred up those um, harder materials to eat. And again, that foramen magnum towards the back. Next, we're going to talk about our bird skull. And we're going to see a lot of differences with our bird skull, right? Part of that is because so far we've only talked about mammals. And this is a bird, so it has, you know, different adaptations, lives a different life. And so one of those adaptations that we see is it has larger orbitals for its eyes. Why is that? Why does it have larger orbitals? Why does it need larger eyes? Um, you know, in a lot of birds, they need larger eyes because one, they're flying. So they need to be able to not run into um, different objects. They need to be aware of their surroundings so they're not just constantly flying into stuff. Um, and a lot of its prey, a lot of what it's eating, can also either be moving quickly, also maybe in flight, or it could be really small, and um, they just need really good vision to be able to see uh, where their prey is. Another difference that we're going to see is it has a beak, right? It doesn't have teeth like we've seen in these other animals. So how does it chew up its food if it doesn't have teeth? A lot of birds... Um, actually have a gizzard um, and so that gizzard is a body part where their food can go into and they will actually eat small rocks and pebbles to help grind up and break down um, that food so that they can go ahead and digest it. Another difference that we see that's really interesting about this bird skull is the weight of it, right? It's pretty lightweight. And part of that's because it's smaller. It's a smaller animal than what we've talked about so far. But also, if we're thinking about how, you know, an animal flies and needs to be able to, you know, fly around and whatnot, um, it needs a pretty lightweight bone structure, right? If it's super heavy, it's going to make it a little bit harder to fly. So a lot of bird skulls will actually weigh only 1% of their total body weight, which is pretty small if you think about it. And another just last thing that's really interesting that's different about the bird skull than these other skulls we've talked about is where that frame and magnum is, right? So, so far we've seen it on the back where their spine goes that way. But if we think about birds, its body's sitting here. And so we see that hole underneath, similar to how a human would be, because um, their spine is going down that way as their body sits right here. So those are a couple of the differences that we've seen um, between the bird and the other skulls we've talked about so far. Lastly, we can talk about the deer. Um, one thing to know is, you know, we've talked a lot about diet. We see that similar tooth structure to the goat. Deers are also eating a lot of plant material, so they need to be able to grind up that plant material. So a little bit broader um, of teeth. And the other thing that I really wanted to talk about with deers are their antlers. So their antlers are really cool. They only grow on males, um, and they're really used for fighting and for attracting mates. And 
What's really interesting about antlers is they're one of the fastest growing bones of all mammals. And that's because they shed these once a year, which is pretty quick. Um, and so they're shedding these once a year. They also have a velvet coating on these when it's on them. Um, and that allows for oxygen and blood flow, which helps it grow so quickly. But what's really interesting about the antler and its velvet coating is as these shed, um, that velvet coating can actually provide a lot of really essential minerals and calcium for other animals. And so this tells us that, you know, these animals a lot of the time aren't, don't live independent lives, you know, that a lot of their lives are very interconnected. And really they become more resilient with that interconnectedness. They can depend on each other. And so as we think about ecosystems, as we even think about the communities we are in ourselves, how does our interconnectedness with other creatures, other humans, make us more resilient and make us stronger in the end? Thank you all so much for joining me today for this program on different animal schools. I hope it's piqued your interest a little bit about bone structures and bones and skulls and all that. Um, even if not, I hope that you learned a little bit about different animal adaptations and how those look different with different animals. So thank you so much. Um, please join us for future programs that we have coming to you.